All right, the necklace problem. Okay, so this is a simplified manner of a necklace, okay? And what I have here is several spheres. Each sphere has its pivot point in the center. And all I did was duplicate those around in a circle. Okay, but that's not the important part. After I got done with it, I have to freeze transformation these. That way all the, the translates and rotates are at zero. And then what I'm going to do is take each one of these items and add a hinge constraint to it. Okay. So item one, item two, hinge constraint. This one, this one, G on the keyboard. That's last command. So I can keep going on and on and add hinge constraints to all these items. And keep in mind that will limit it to one axis being rotated. Um, if you wanted it in many axes, you can add uh, pin constraints. I find that sometimes it's easier to control with hinge constraints because that way it doesn't clash into the model's body as much. Okay, and lastly I'm going to put a hinge constraint here, here. I'm going to move this guy over just a little bit. There we go. Okay, good. Now, what happens? Well, if I hit play, nothing happens, right? Because why? Well, there's no gravity. Okay, you have 800 frames. Select all these things. And I'm going to add some gravity to the mix. Now what happens? It falls. Okay? It doesn't really calculate that much because there's nothing really to interact with. But, if there was... Better believe there's going to be some interaction here. All right, so let's hit play. Oh yeah, and let's make this a passive rigid body. All right, and that is the necklace trick. Okay, so that works really well for just about anything as far as uh, instead of having the chain, uh, maybe you wouldn't have something that is able to put together like a chain. And in that case, you can use hinge or pin constraints. All right, enjoy, and on to the next video.